What we have in this box here could potentially be one of the best student slash gaming laptops. I am talking about the Lenovo Legion Slim 7 Gen 8, which I've been using as my daily driver for over 4 months now. This laptop looks really clean and aesthetic, but still packs some serious specs, which I find really good for students that want performance but not an aggressive gamer look. I have the AMD version here, so for the processor we have a Ryzen 7840HS. As the GPU we have a Nvidia RTX 4060. For the RAM we have 32GB of fast DDR5 memory, and for storage I chose only 512GB. But there are many options with more storage. For my laptop I chose to upgrade the storage myself, which is no problems. So now let's get right into the details. First let's get this thing out of the box. Besides the laptop, you also get this thick 230 watt power brick to charge your laptop. Now let's take a closer look at the design and quality. Really special here is that this laptop is completely out of aluminium, which gives it a really premium feeling. Generally this laptop has a really clean and not too gamer like aesthetic. Take a look at that subtle Lenovo Legion branding. Additionally the hinge is also really premium, because it's really sturdy and can be opened with a single finger. Because it's the slim model, it's only 2 centimeters thick and it's also really light with around 2 kilograms of weight. I think this is perfect for any student who wants to carry around the laptop often, but still wants an impressive workstation at home. For ports we have on the right side a full size SD card reader and this little switch to turn off the webcam. On the left side we have two USB type C ports and of course a headphone jack. All the other important ports are at the back which is really practical for cable management at home. Here we have three USB ports, an HDMI port and the port for the charger, but keep in mind you can charge via USB-C 2 if your power brick is powerful enough. If we turn it around we see that the whole thing sits on these rubber footings. Also we can have a look at the down facing speakers that we will test later. There is also a big vent for the cooling system. On the top side we have another big vent for the cooling system. You can find the power button here too which has an integrated fingerprint reader. The keyboard sadly only has a single color background light. But because the chassis is fully aluminium, there is almost no flex in the keyboard which is really good. Also this thing sounds amazing, let's hear it. The laptop also features a 1080p webcam in this small notch. You can also find a small light next to it which indicates if the camera is on or the camera quality is decent for a laptop as you can see, but it's also not really good. Now let's check out the screen. We have a super sharp IPS panel here which has a 3.2K resolution and an aspect ratio of 16 to 10. 16 to 10 is really great if you need a bit more real estate at the top and bottom for example for coding. The whole display is 16 inch and has a refresh rate of 165Hz. The color accuracy is also really good for an IPS panel, so you can definitely use this for photo editing, especially with its 100% DCI-P3 color spectrum. There is also a configuration with a less accurate and lower resolution display with 240Hz if you are more interested in the gaming part of the laptop. But now let's hear the speakers, which were designed by Harman. Personally I find the speakers relatively good and clear, and the bass is also loud but of course it's not as good as real speakers, but still enough for everyday tasks. Now let's take a look at the software and performance. The laptop comes with Windows 11 right out of the box, and the Lenovo Vantage app is also pre-installed. I am personally a really big fan of this app because it gives you some really useful settings to improve your gaming performance, and also your battery life. Also you can overclock your GPU here and switch your integrated graphics on and off for a better performance. The laptop also features a performance, quite an automatic fan mode which can be engaged with function QU. In performance mode the laptop can get quite loud though. With function space you can also control the lighting of your keyboard. Of course the laptop also has some gesture features like scrolling with two fingers and opening the tap manager with three fingers. Now let's talk about the important stuff like battery life. So in this laptop we have a 99.9 watt hour battery which is the biggest legal size. Also you can use some settings in the Lenovo Vantage app to protect your battery which is really useful. In my experience the laptop reached around 6 hours of battery life when I used it for some text editing and other easy tasks. 
so it should be enough for a typical school or a university day. But if you plan on doing more extensive work on the go, you will most likely need to take your charger with you, which is quite heavy. To conclude, this laptop has really good battery life in comparison to other Windows laptops, but MacBooks are still ahead in this department. Now it's time for the big question in the room. How good is the performance of this machine? To answer this, I ran some benchmarks and also tested some games. First, let's check the Cinebench scores. The GPU performed relatively good, but the CPU didn't perform so well. Let's run some 3D Mark tests now. In the Fire Striker test, we scored around 21,000 points, which is okay, but a bit worse than what is possible with this hardware. As you can see, the temps of the laptop can get quite high, but your keyboard will stay relatively cold. By the way, here is the benchmark for the laptop without the power brick. The performance is not that much worse, which is great for gaming on the go, but keep in mind that the battery will drain much faster while gaming. Let's run some games now. So this laptop can run most games pretty smoothly at 1440p, which is really good. Now let's test out ray tracing and push this machine to its limits. Let's run some more intense games like Elden Ring. First let's try out the highest possible settings. Here we only got around 30fps which is not amazing, but still not too bad for a non-fps game. It's time for Fortnite. Now let's see how good max settings work in Fortnite. This is definitely not playable. Still you can play with ray tracing and a decent frame rate if you really want to. At 1080p with epic settings, we can easily get the 165 FPS we need for the monitor. Before we make a conclusion, let us quickly take a look at the inside of the laptop. To open it, we need a 1.2 Phillips head screwdriver. There are 8 screws at the back. You can easily open the back cover by the cooling vents. This reveals the two NVMe SSD slots. In the one on the right will be installed the SSD from the factory and it can hold a double-sided SSD. Also look at that amazing cooling system. On my model the RAM is not upgradable but I believe there is an option with upgradable RAM. So to conclude my review I would say that this laptop of course isn't really the best performing or the slimmest and lightest machine on the market but instead it's the perfect fusion between both the gaming and the work world. It is not as heavy and unesthetic as most gaming laptops and it performs way better than many work laptops which in my opinion makes this laptop the perfect option for students or generally any person who wants a quiet capable machine that doesn't scream gaming and has decent battery life. Also I believe that it's really fairly priced with its price around $1600, especially with its really premium build quality. So overall if you are on the look for a new laptop for school or you are just generally interested in a clean gaming laptop you need to consider this machine. If you found this video helpful, please support us with a like and a subscription, it would mean a lot to us.